Okay, students, um, I'm trying to record a lesson on my uh, computer. And uh, I just, right now I have Gmail open. And I have a Macintosh computer, Mac, mini Mac. So the audio is going on in my phone and the recording will be here, screen recording. So anyways, I have a folder. When I get an, something from you guys, it'll show up here in my primary account. And then I store them in a folder over here that I made. So I thought I'd like to uh, just show you something with Jake's uh, photo shoot. And what you guys should practice in Photoshop while I'm gone. And uh, um, hopefully you all know how to upload files to a Google album and put your name on there in the title. And you can see he shared it with me. I can see my little picture. And you can also just go there and hit link. And then you hit the copy link and you can email it to me. But this this allows you to share it with other people that have Google. And there's a link symbol too. So Jake again did a nice photo shoot. I was looking at him. I did some comments. You can see a little comment box here. And I really liked uh, uh, quite a few of these. So I'm going to play with this one. I thought this was the most unique and unusual of Jake's. So to play with it, you have to download it. So up here in the right corner, download. That's actually where it goes. But here in the right corner of the photograph, go back to that one. On the three dots, download. That's where it goes. So it's image 7519. The one means I've already have it downloaded. And I'm going to open it up. Okay, now that's just preview. You can't do anything in preview. So where do I find my downloads? So I'm going to minimize this. I will go to my home. I go to my downloads. And there it is. There's a 75.91.1. Now, for remembering purposes, I would just call this Jake B. And then Farmer's Market 1. So I can rename files. Make sure you have the dot before the JPG. JPEG. That's what JPG stands for. Sometimes it's spelled JPG. Sometimes it's spelled JPEG. So I can find that file easy. Now I will hit open with, and I've got Adobe Photoshop. Or I can also just drag the icon and on my dock is Photoshop. So a little lesson in Photoshop and cropping and maybe some simple adjustments. This is a pretty nice picture. Now these are called um, little sub menus and they show different tools or um, aspects of what you can do, all your adjustment changes, and you can move them around. This is your toolbox. It's always on the left side. And uh, the tools, if you hold down on the mouse, it'll say what they are. There's a move tool. This is a rectangular marquee, but you can make it elliptical or single row. This is a selection tool brush. You make a lasso, poly, and magnetic. We'll go into these later. But just know poly is going to be straight lines. It's geographic. Lasso is loose. And magnetic is tricky because it sticks to an edge. But you can bounce around. Uh, this is your magic wand tool. Uh, I use it fairly frequently, but uh, it's a little complicated. The main things are to crop. Just there a crop. And then um, we can talk about brush and clone stamp. And then one of my favorite, which is dodge and burn. So if you want to use dodge tool, it looks like a lollipop. A burn tool, a 
looks like a closed hand with a hole. So there's burn. So it'll put a dot by the tool you have. So let's, um, so because I know I'm going to save my best pictures for portfolios a certain size, I want you guys to get used to um, resizing these things. So this is your Photoshop menu bar. You've got file, you list everything to do with the computer and the file, edit, which is not Photoshop editing, but it is kind of, uh, you know, and you need that if you want to do some certain things. Image is where you'd be allotted. And this is the mode. We shoot color. So it says RGB color. Red, green, blue. CMYK color is for printers. It's cyan, magenta, yellow. And K is black. Whereas B is blue. And then there's grayscale right here, which would get rid of all the color. You don't want to do that right now. It's, um, sometimes I do right away. It will reduce your file size by two thirds. Because when you think about file size, red is one third, green is one third, blue is one third. So that's a full file. And you can always down here, the bottom left, it'll say document size. It's 51 megabytes. And then you can click there and you can get some other details. Okay, so I am going to uh, keep my mode RGB. I like to play with levels. And levels right here. So I can grab these submenus. All these submenus are in a window. And you can see history, layers, paths. I'm not going to use that one right now. So I would just unclick that. So, and then I want to make sure I have options and tools. And uh, application frames are grayed out. But tools is this. So if you don't have your tools, you won't see that bar. Okay, levels. You have three little triangles. This is your darks. See down here, this goes from black to bright white. And all these shades of gray in between. This is your whites. And for the most part, you'll be playing in the middle. So if you kind of move the middle one over too much, it might brighten some of that stuff, but look what it does to the background too. So, but anyways, we're, hit, we're gonna hit some uncheck preview. That's the original. And then that's me moving the sliders, the white slider, the dark slider. Let's keep it preview. You can see the difference before, after. Now this is, I like to teach levels because it's you controlling the purpose. And I'm looking at the peppers, things like that. Now I know I can manipulate these colors in the background and darken them down and stuff. Hit okay. Now, right now, it's a 51 megabyte file. That's pretty big. Let's look at the file size. Under image, image size. Okay, now most cameras were, you know, if you're shooting uh, with your Canons, a large um, file, you, you will save it as 72 resolution, which is good for screens and the internet. But they make it big, like 72 inches, because they want to maintain the quality. Myself, you can keep this, but just know that if you like lower this down to nine inches mm -hmm. wide, in this little bracket here, it'll show six inches high. At 72, look, look up here. It was 51 megabytes, now it's 820. Well, that's fine for your phone, but it's lousy, lousy to play with or maintain quality. If you saved it like this, you would never get the original back if you deleted it off your camera and card. So I always make it pretty much a standard nine by six 
are 8 by 12. So if I change the height to 8, look what happens to the width. See? Automatically changes to 12 because of this length. And I already use inches. So we're used to that. Now, 72 pixels per inch, PPI in other words. And you can do centimeter, but we just use inch. Make this 300. Voila. Did you know it looks smaller? You kind of zoom down. Command zero on my screen makes it bigger. Now, the rulers are showing. And you can see, if I grab a bar, there's a guideline. I can grab a guideline inside the top ruler. What's 9 divided by 3? Three? 3. I'm going to grab two bars. Okay. 3 plus 3 is 6. And then another 3 inches down to 9. So I can always just go there. Okay. So that's 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds. It does look a little off. Right? So maybe I'll just move these up. So move tool. This really shows eight inch. Oh, it's eight by 12. My goodness, see? Eight by 12. So eight inches divided by three is gonna be somewhere around two and a half, probably. Two and a third. So that's closer to one third. Then on the horizontal ruler, I can grab this. Now 12 divided by three is four inches. Four plus four is eight. So where's the inch marks? 12 inches wide, eight inches tall. Nine by six goes into three easily. Slightly different. So you can see that this is a basic grid pattern, tic-tac-toe I call it, and it's like the rule of thirds. One third, two thirds, three thirds. Horizontal, one third, two thirds, three thirds, top to bottom. Now this picture is not so much about balance. It's got layers in it. So, um, but you can kind of see how it's divided up into thirds here. You've got the foreground, one-third. You've got your focus, your critical focus, more or less with the peppers and the other third. And then the background, top background, has got a more shallow depth of field, which I think is great. And that's uh, the top third. Okay, if I don't want to see the guidelines, I can just click on extras or disappear. Okay, so this being a slightly different composition, more about layers, not so much about rule of thirds. Um, I, I like it. I find that your eyes always gonna go to bright things like whites. And so I don't think you need this edge right here. I think it would look better if I took down. So I'm gonna grab this corner. I click on the crop tool and I take it down. Maybe that boy's red shirt. I don't need a lot of that woman. Okay. And then I might come down slightly to the top of, get rid of the top of his head. So you don't have your eye going to bright spots in the corner. Okay. What do you guys think? Now you're concentrating more on the vegetables. So Command Z, undo one stop. Before and then after. So if I go to history, I can see it. Okay, there's a, a guide, a guide, and then crop. So I can go here to here. It kind of lets me look back and forth in time what I've done with this file so far. So 
I've opened it, I've adjusted the levels, I've changed the image, I've moved some guides around, and I have a background. And that's, the background layer is locked. And I did show auto some things that sometimes I do, which can be fun and fun. So I can hit command, this little thing by the trash can, and it gives me a blank layer. I'm not gonna do that now. So I can just throw this layer away. But I can choose duplicate layer with a right click on a Mac, maybe PC, it's Command J. And it's now called layer one. So if I wanna darken layer one, I can go to image, my adjustments, levels, and I'm gonna just darken up that background. So I'm bringing the midtones down. But what happens to our whole picture? The whole things get dark, right? Well, check this out. Now this is me teaching you kind of my way, my manual way, so I'm in charge rather than the computer doing everything. I'm gonna use what's called the eraser tool. I always make sure, this is your brush, that I use a pretty soft hardness, you know, zero to 10%. And the size of the brush is here. That dot, that circle on my tomato is the brush, okay? Now, shortcut to make brush sizes bigger is your bracket keys. Right bracket. Okay, I am going to make the brush soft up here. As you can see it's 111 pixels. And it's pretty much 0% hardness. I'll just drop it down to zero. Okay, I'm gonna lighten up the foreground. Actually, I'm erasing. I'm erasing the top layer. Make this a little smaller. I'm kind of erasing just what I want to highlight pretty much the top of those peppers. I can make the brush smaller if I want to and get in there more. But for the most part, I'm just kind of doing this. Now, these eyeballs on your layers, they're on the left side. There's your original. There's that layer. Oh, hide the background layer. See what I did? So you can kind of see what I erased. And that's because I erased it completely. Opacity was 100%. You can erase it by less, just by simply down. I'm gonna erase to a smaller opacity. Opacity is what you see and what's blocked. So if you hold your hand in front of your face, it's 100% opacity. If you can see through your hand, then there would be a percentage of that opacity. Okay, so now I've got two layers. I think then I can go to layer, merge down. Now, you can see it's still named Jake B, Farmer's Market 1, JPEG, and the size is 18 megabytes. Just for learning lessons, I'm gonna make a duplicate. And so I go to image, duplicate, and it'll have the word copy behind it. Watch what happens if I make the mode grayscale. It's gonna make it a black and white image. It's gonna say discard all the color information. And so colors are turned into different values. But look at the size, 6.26 megabytes. Where this one was 18.8 megabytes. What's 18 divided by three? Six. Now I could play with dodge and burn here. Dodge were light in areas. Again, I use soft edge brushes. So this is kind of a hard edge. You can see it's kind of a hard edge. It's, hardness is 100%. I'll bring it down to soft. I'll make it a little smaller. And I can 
But, and I can say I'm gonna lighten up these peppers. Can you see that? Now you might say that's too much. It kind of ruins it because now they're similar to those tones. We'll go back in time. I'm going to choose my exposure mid-tones, which is good. Instead of 18%, I'll just pick like 6% or 7%. Maybe 11 to 12. And I'm just going to hide, erase some of it. But you can see it's a little less fine-tuned. But you can kind of see. Now, I can also lighten up these tomatoes in the background. But if I want to darken, Make, I use the burn tool, which is underneath Dodge, closed hand. Mid-tones, which is your middle grays. 35% is quite a bit. Maybe play with 20 something. And I'm just going to darken the foreground. And I'm going to darken the background. See, you know, with black and white, you don't have the color con distraction. And then lower my brush size. And I'm going to kind of darken these tomatoes up a little bit. So I might uh, darken the value of a dark green. Okay. So history, here we go. Color, made a grayscale, which isn't bad, but it's kind of all the same type of gray. And with a little dodging and burning, I brought out some of the highlights of the pepper tops. So you can still see how these are dark. So well, that's going to be a little off-putting to some people, but you know, if you want to, I can just, and I want to make that dodge, I can, I can just kind of lighten up these stems. But because the brush tool is a little wide, it's also lightening up some of the background. But the nice thing about Dodge and Burn, it's you controlling what's going to be lighter or darker. Now, there are some objections to using too much of it because it does change the quality of your file. Because it really um, is distorting the, the pixels. So I think I like the foreground a little darker. So Burn. Brush size a little bit bigger. Uh, Mid-tones, I can do shadows if I want to, and that'll darken things up a lot faster. And I'm just going to burn in the corners. So kind of like a smiley face. I'm going to bring it up like that. Go back to mid-tones. And just kind of make the brush big, and I'll just do a sweep. So... Anyways, that's just a black and white version of that original color. And it's now I can change the mode, or I mean uh, adjustments. I can go to brightness, contrast. I can brighten it up a little bit. Contrast is definitely black and white, so I'm going to add a little contrast. So what do you think? After contrast and adjustment, it's similar to uh, levels. Um, and I can kind of, again, lighten up the, the whiter, lighter grays and whites. I can really darken down the blacks more if I wanted to, and then the mid-tones. So this is levels, and that gets all the grayscale. Contrast kind of plays with the extremes. So what do you think? If you go into your history, I'd only record so many states, but you kind of get the sense that it goes back. So I did a lot on this. Each click of the mouse is a new level. So I'm going to do this. Save as a copy. So I'm going to layer it. Make sure it's flat. So back down one layer. Okay, I'm going to save as a copy. Uh, 
I can put it in a Photoshop cloud, which is fine. That's, they give you some free space when you subscribe. But to have my pictures in one place, I've created a folder under my photo album, pictures album, and I called it Assignments. And then this is already called JPEG. And then, so it's Homeschoolers Images. And I can, might say, um, so I might title it underscore BW, black and white. Okay, now notice it says dot JPEG. Copies or give you JPEGs. Save. Now, if I want a high quality one, I can do save. Well, it's the same thing. Um, BW. But I can change the file to like TIFF, Tagged Image File Format, or Photoshop. But you have to have Photoshop to open those up. You can't open Photoshop up in Google Drive or anything. So TIFF or Photoshop. I'll just keep it Photoshop. And you can see, I'm going to close this. Voila. And there's your color. And I'm going to file, save as, Farmer's Market 1, which is the original color. If I want to remind myself it's color, I'll just write in color. But make sure you have a dot before the JPEG. If I want it in downloads, no, I want to keep it here. And there's your JPEG. it out, close out Photoshop or minimize it, and look what I have. Under pictures, assignments, I did one earlier with my dog, I'll show you that later, but I've got your Jake black and white, I got Jake black and white adjusted, those are pretty much the same because we just have them. Photoshop is going to be 6.1 megabytes. The JPEG is going to be 3.1 megabytes. So it's, JPEG compresses it. And then the color. These are talk about in another slideshow, but this is a rule of thirds picture. And uh, remember, right now I've named these files. So if I want to hit view, sort by file name, guess what? It's going to stick all the Gracies together, because G becomes, and then the Jake's together. And you can see the different file formats behind. Now, to get the original in there, which is in the downloads, in my downloads, there it is. I can drag it in the pictures. If I hold it over there, it'll bring up thing, and there's that assignment folder. And then I can do it there. And so, and I can write down O R I G I N A, just so you can see the difference. Straight out of the camera, adjusted, brightened. Convert it into a black and white, and a black and white with a little higher quality. Most printers, at least, you know, Walgreens and Walmart and stuff like that, uh, they want to not take PSDs or TIFFs. They only take JPEGs or PNGs. So TIFF 